All right. Thanks very much, Tamsin. Uh, we're going to spend a, a bit of time now on questions. We can field questions uh, via, we'll talk about the functions in a, in a minute when I go back over to the computer and, and, and see it. But I'll just kick it off with sort of a, a general question about these. Um, which uh, about the latest thing you were, you were mentioning, which is uh, you have a, a great deal of observations um, from ground and space that have real sort of direct application in terms of hazards and monitoring. So how, how operational are these things at this stage? What is, what's the state of their use by local governments, broader governments? What are the plans to integrate things? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's um, no, it's really important. It's really important when we're putting these things together. Also, to think about uh, the end users right from the very beginning. So, just to take one example, um, working with the Icelandic Met Office on um, the Holland eruption was really, really important. There are uh, people on this this co-author list, so Melissa Petha and Zara Basotti just to take two examples um, from the Icelandic Met Office who are collaborating with us on that. And then another important collaborator is uh, people like Claire Whitton from the UK Met Office who are charged with the London VAC, who, are, uh, who, are, who have to make the call about where the, if you have another ash cloud, like the, uh, the open one, which airspace is going to be, well, they feed it in. They feed in advice about which airspace is going to be closed and which is going to be open. Um, something that's really important we, we really try and do is to work with 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 people right from the start uh, but it may part because they have so much to say scientifically but also because we want to produce uh produce outputs that are genuinely useful to them uh, as well as being scientifically interesting um so anybody <laughs> A bit of a different question from non technologist perspective, but um, we talk about the gas emissions from significant ranges and unwanted volcanoes. Are they completely different kind of hazards, or so the questions about gas emissions from mid-ocean ridges. Uh, well, I suppose ice is an interesting one because it's a mid-ocean ridge yeah. that comes above above the surface. I mean, they, yeah, the the um. The fundamental volatiles are different, apart from the fact that some of the more soluble ones, like the uh, halogens, uh, the pressure of the water column can actually keep the majority of them still in the magma, so you can end up with a lot of the halogens um, still in the still dissolved in, in the volcanic glass in the pillar lava. There's some of the other species as well. Carbon dioxide, not so much because it's so it's only soluble. Um, in terms of the hazard. I mean, just the fact that they're they're under a big water column makes it quite different. So they're not really they're they're they're, they're not impinging on our our air quality or environment environment in quite the same way. But obviously, they're changing you know, the volcanic activity at mid ocean ridges is having impacts on ocean chemistry. But that's that's a sort of a, a, a rather more um, yeah. There's a longer time scales involved, I suppose, in terms of the the mixing time scales. The, the the happy occasion. I think there's a. I've forgotten what it what it is in the Caribbean. Is there a uh, mic work? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. The kick and jelly is there. Like some they, some uh, boats have got sunk because they go over this kind of bub very very uh, uh, frantically bubbling volcanic source, uh, and then the water can't support their weight, and so they they go under. I, I don't I don't know so much about that, but I suppose that's a slightly more specialist risk. Uh, I have a question about, um, were you able to measure the overpressure in the magma reservoir in the Santa Cruz example, uh, geodetically, and if so, or if not, what are your thoughts about that? What do you mean by the, over, so the pressure about the overpressure of the Santa Cruz magma chamber? Yes, I think it's an uncertainty describe it. Yeah, we weren't. So we didn't particularly focus on that. Uh, we, we were looking, I guess, at the volume. It's the volume change 
the Mogi outputs and uh, stuff, it, yeah, the, 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 the volume change, I suppose you might be able to interpret that in some way in terms of uh, overpressure. I'd need to think more about that. Oh, here we go. From JD, uh, how real time are the satellite observations? Um, so, well, hopefully ever more so, I think, is the. Uh, um, the, I mean, the, the idea is with the INSAR um, to, to get the first stage of processing done automatically. So if, you, if you've got any, or Eleanor might tell, how, how quickly do you think we'll be able to get Sentinel? Yes, yeah, so within, within the day, then the, the observations are only going to be in a few days. So. Yeah, so, so clear. So the observations, there's the observations themselves. So obviously you need two observations to, to make an interferogram. Um, but then the automatic processing would hope would hope to have that the the data down and processed within sort of a, a day or so. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the uh, SO two, I mean, yeah, a couple of hours if we can. Is there sometimes there's a, a, a short delay in getting the data in, or is that going? Yeah, depends if everything is working. So the I mean the I think you know the the idea would be ever. Getting ever better and faster and all that, particularly if we, if we want to use it for real real time assimilation into into atmospheric models. I had a, a similar or sort of follow up question with the uh, so two measurements, the more direct dedicated sensors. Are those um, are they direct measurements? Because when you get the satellite data, is it just a, a, a map of the so two observations, or are they possible? Well, no, no, you need, I mean, it's the, the only, yeah, the, name, the clues in the name, it's the ozone mapping instrument. So it was designed, put up there to map ozone. IRZ is for a lot of other different uses as well. Yeah. Um, so, so, I mean, no, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the group in Oxford Physics have got uh, a retrieval that's running, which takes the spectrum information and, uh, and, and, and retrieves the, the sulfur dioxide and the height from that. Um, so yes, this is sort of something I didn't uh, get to speak, uh, have time to speak through quite so much. So we were trying to sort of start off by um, doing that uh, on Santa Rita. So this is the geodetic trace, this, this blue line here, and then we've got the seismicity um, in the black line there. And you see there's these two kind of peaks in seismic uh, energy release, which is uh, this sort of step here, and then this big step up here. Um, and we sort of we, we saw this sort of change in the in the geo so that after this first one here you get a flattening off so that's sort of what we're interpreting as the the first the first pulse um, or the, the end of the first pulse is flattening off and then the new pulse comes this, this it starts steepening off again and the whole thing seemed to end really in this sort of final energy release here which then went on to this this flattening off. Um, there's another intriguing part of this story, uh, which is part of a longer talk, or a talk more focused on Santorini, I guess, which is all this, also these gas measurements here. And making gas measurements is very challenging. So you're looking at carbon dioxide and you're looking at diffuse emissions. But well, we did see this, we, met, we were lucky enough to catch, capture a little snapshot just after this, uh, this seismic crisis just there, or the seismic release just there. Um, and actually, that's the one time we did see quite a significant change in the degassing pattern. So what we haven't really, what was, we need some more case studies to try and sort of put this together, is what's, what's kind of, what's the call, what are the common causes of effect? So is it, is the seismic release actually the gas, it's related to gas movement, or is the seismic, um, is the seismicity pushing more gas up through the system or, or changing the permeability of the system? And then, how is that related then to the the geodetic signal that we see? So you know, are we relieving the pressure by releasing the gas, uh, and that's why we see an end in the an end in the inflation, or is, are things happening in a in a different order there? So um, I think uh, I think that's a really uh, a really trying to build more to get the seismicity and the geodesy together, and there are other good examples as well. And I'd also argue for trying to um, Build gas emissions data into that as well. But if you've got a situ if you've got a system where you um, you mainly have carbon dioxide coming out, which is the, the deepest gas to 
come out of solution, then that does actually present real measurement challenges. So there's, there's, a, there's a challenge there as well. Yeah, and I guess you know part of the part of the question is about application in real time crises, right. and there's as, as Eleanor was alluding to the radar GRC. There's going to be a bit of a time lag. So maybe you're again, but then if you've got GPS right. that GPS. work out, then yeah. Mm. All right. Well, the last thing to say, I guess, is if anyone has uh, any further questions or wants to know more about these things, um, probably Twitter is one of the most direct ways <laughs> to, to get in, in touch or get in contact with either Comet or with Tams and herself. Um, uh, you can find quite the common community uh, wherever you want there. Um, other than that, I think, uh, I hope this was valuable to everyone um, out there who tuned in for it. It was certainly a funny kind of experience for those of us <laughs> in the room watching Tamsin uh, off the wall. <laughs> um, and, you know, Thanks, Tom, for putting this together. Yeah. And thank you, Austin, for uh, managing the tech. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.